I th believe we are live with our very first Cassini seminar. This is fun. Uh, webinar, there we go. Uh, and anyway, I am Mark Mayer. I'm the CEO of Cassini Technologies. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, with me, welcome Dr. Wiley and Dr. Stevenson. Um, thank you both very much for being here. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Stevenson, tell us a little bit about yourself so the Folks, I can't imagine anybody doesn't know you, but or for anybody who doesn't. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Dee Stevenson, and I'm in Venice, Florida, and I have a boutique practice. <clears throat> About 92% of my cases are premiums, and um, love and Cassini have for a long time, and of course, my hero, Bill Wiley. <laughs> Dr. Wiley? Uh, thanks, Dee. Well, you're my hero as well. You know, uh, learned so much from you, and I uh, look forward to this. Uh, webinar tonight. Um, yeah, I'm Bill Wiley, uh, medical director of Cleveland Eye Clinic here in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, perform cataract and refractive surgery. I've um, always had a thing for guidance, and there's been a lot of cool tools that have been out there to kind of guide us when we're in the OR to you know put the lenses in the right spot. And uh, it's cool to be working with Cassini on this uh, on, on this uh, new tech. So thanks, Mark, for uh, pulling us in on this. You bet. And uh, thank you, Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Wiley, for being some of our early uh, users and helping us get this launched. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Cassini is a topographer. We use uh, ray tracing technology. So there's 700 LEDs that blanket the cornea to get really great measurements of both the anterior and posterior cornea. That data with our guidance system, now all of the data from the clinic, and it can even be your other uh, devices in the clinic. So your other diagnostics, whether it be your biometers, your other topographers, whatever it is, all of that information goes into the planner and the planner is cloud accessible. So you have patients go through the normal flow, all of the data is uploaded from the Cassini in and populate, so we don't run into any transcription errors there. And then the doctors can simply go in, validate all the information on the patient, and when they've got the right lens, and we put in all of the lenses. I know, Dr. Stevenson, you're uh, um, using a lot of B&L lenses, and Bill, I've been with you, and you use, my goodness, just like about everybody else's lens. Um, but we've got all the lenses in there. Um, and if you need to add some lenses, we can always do that. But we, um, the data then is in the planner and then the planner is either, the data from the planner is either sent via the network. Uh, in the case of Dr. Wiley, it just works right directly from your network, uh, right into the operating room to the guidance. And then um, with Dr. Stevenson, um, while the Cassini is running your lens are, um, we also are on the front end of the lens, our laser, but then that data uh, can also go over via uh, a USB if you don't have a network that runs to your operating rooms. Once you're in the OR, we've got a big 32 inch screen that is, that is there and um, fairly simple to be able to do the registration. Um, we were talking about this the other day um, and Dr. Wiley, your experience on the registration portion of that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the uh, registration is seamless. Um, you know, basically when we're just, when I'm getting the eye set up at the very beginning, putting the lid speculum in, you know, uh, lubricating the eye, you know, the, um, you know, scrub tech can either, uh, or the circulator can register at that point. As soon as they see there's a clear window, um, they can register or also, uh, and we'll talk more about this, but um, I'm still doing sort of a belt and suspenders. I, I, I've been using Cassini kind of head to head with Aura and using both sort of preoperative information to kind of help guide me, uh, but also intraoperative information. And there's a point at, at Aura when we first kind of set up and I have the patient look at the light and my circulator just basically runs both machines, captures Cassini, takes maybe three seconds. And I think Aura takes maybe 10 seconds i'm not sure something like that to do the capture but in that in that point we're capturing with both devices and then i can compare the results and it's it's pretty cool so i can see you know so what was the uh preoperative information how is that guiding us and then also uh intraoperative information and see how those correlate perfect perfect so the um and then um d uh in your experience because you've been using the cassini with the lens our laser 
Um, what is what have you been finding with the guidance versus the what we've been doing with the Cassini running the lens are? Well, I do everything that Bill does, and we've been our user since uh, day one when it was orange. So, you know, I always want to, you know, I I still go back to Aura uh, for my final reading, but when they all line up, it's amazing. And it's where I want it to be. But the nice part about having Cassini um, with my lens are is it makes the IntelliAxis marks. And this correlates to what's on the, the, on the Cassini um, and, I, and I find guidance. And I find that um, it's, you know, really pretty much exactly the same uh, with the, the guidance itself. So, um, it, 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 again, it's a belt and suspenders as well, but it also is just uh, confirmatory. And for me, confirmatory makes my job so much easier. And I feel very uh, comfortable leaving the OR with the, with the patient having two or three things all match. So it's kind of where I am. That's terrific. Um, we did get some questions that have come in and we got some earlier questions. So we'll just start with this. Um, and will it work with any microscope? Dr. Wiley, you've got an older uh, Leica scope. Yes, yes. So we've got an older scope uh, that we've been using it on. We have one of the early scopes. Gosh, I've been in practice over 20 years, and it was a scope that we had apparently the surgery center had bought, you know, used at that time. So it's been following around for us for some time. And um, it's interesting. We just keep upgrading it with new tech. And, uh, you know, we upgraded it with, you know, True Vision. Mark, you helped me, you know, you know integrate yep. that back in the day. And then um, and then, uh, with Aura and now we've got, uh, Cassini. So we've got some really cool, you know, upgraded, uh, uh, things, but what's nice is, you know, there are, you know, there, there, as everyone, everyone knows, there's other guidance systems out there, but it can be a big commitment if you're going to have to buy a whole new scope and new diagnostic and integrate that and, and, and then let alone put it in multiple rooms. And so what's great is this can be literally put on any scope from something over 20 years old to something that's brand new. And uh, so uh, it's a great add-on for any scope that's out there. And I have, a, I have a, a Zeiss Lumera I, which is an older Zeiss machine as well. And again, um, since Cassini is agnostic or Switzerland, however you want to look at it, sure. um, you know, you can have any uh, microscope uh, and it's nice. And same with Aura for that matter. You know, yep. um, and you have to have an Alcon machine, an Alcon right. Yep. And, and we've got it on Alcon scopes. Um, and I know that we've got it on some of the newer uh, Zeiss. Zeiss scopes. Um, and then the only one that we're still waiting on is the brand new Leica Preveo because mm -hmm. they have an internal beam splitter and camera system. And so the way that our system works, as you both know, um, is that it's just a standard beam splitter that's got the, the 2D camera on the side. So we just get a good high definition or 4K camera uh, that's that's capturing that image and going directly to the uh, to the guidance system. Um, so we're not really adding anything new to the stack. This is the same beam splitter that you know we've used forever, really. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, data transfer. We talked a little bit about that. Um, either using the network, um, Dr. Wiley. I know in your your you know your clinics on the other side of the wall. Um, right. And Dr. Stevenson, you're you're um, going across the street, I believe, to to your ASB. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so whether it's a USB or being able to send the information in um, uh, uh, via your your network, it works great. Um, and I see that we've got another question that came in from Dr. Mack. Hi, Ivan. Hope you're wonderful. Um, yeah, asking about how this works um, from like the smart cataract from Alcon. It is different than that, um, Dr. Mack. We, uh, the data is we allow for all of the diagnostic data from the clinic to go into the planner. It's cloud-based planner. Um, and, um, and that allows for you to be able to access it from anywhere. And then it works with any microscope that, that is out there as well as any of the lenses that you want to be using. We can populate the planner with any lens, um, and then you can put in any of the formulas that you um, are comfortable using, whether that's Baird or Holiday or Vegas or HRP or whatever. They have. Up, to, up to four, right, Mark? 
right yes, now. Ma'am. Exactly. Um, and so um, uh, I, I think that that uh, makes it a little bit easier. And then, um, it, you know, there's uh, um, from from my experience with the because um, I you know, sold True Vision to Alcon and spent some time there. My experience is, is that this is a lot easier and faster. And we were talking about that just a few minutes ago where uh, <laughs> Dr. Wiley was saying it takes about three seconds to register the image and, and you've got it there. And all of the data is on the screen. So based on where you make your incisions, we have your incision points there. We account for cyclotorsion and show you exactly how much cyclotorsion you've gotten show you exactly where the capsulotomy is so that you can follow that, follow your capsulotomy if you're not using a laser. Um, and then we show you where the center either of the optical axis or the visual axis, depending upon what, how you want it set up. And, um, and this can be a per patient, or if you always like it on the visual axis, we can go that route as well. Um, so I think those are some of the things that are <coughs> and, perhaps and slightly different than the smart suite. Yes, Dr. Wiley. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, um, you've got, let's say, the smart suite from Alcon. You've got Zeiss, um, I forget, yeah. uh, Veracity, and um, and those are great systems and great diagnostics. And, you know, uh, and and right now I, I probably use more Alcon stuff. We have, you know, an Argos, and but we also have a, a Zeiss IOL Master, and both really nice biometers, but what I feel like is is lacking from the other systems is that foundational piece as far as preoperative posterior corneal uh, astigmatism is hard to measure. And as much as Zeiss has it on their readouts, I, I, I haven't trusted it a whole lot. I think it's a piece of information, but I haven't leaned heavy on that. I, I tended to lean more on intraoperative information for posterior corneal astigmatism. The Argos, I don't think has a posterior corneal astigmatism tool with it uh, i'm not sure d if you know or not or mark you know, so, yeah so that that foundational piece is great you know it's a great biometer but it's missing that that piece and i think what's great uh so even if you're using those other tools you probably if you want to have preoperative diagnostic that's going to help guide you i think it really is important to have something that can measure the posterior corneal astigmatism and from what i can tell you know cassini is doing that uh better than anybody at this point um you know, it's yeah, a cool area. Yeah. And I think, you know, D for you and I to kind of move on from aura, I think we're going to need something, a great diagnostic and, and I've not seen anything, you know, compare yet. Um, now granted aura is complicated. You got to have all your variables perfectly aligned and it can be challenging. What's nice about this or any preoperative diagnostic, you don't have to, you know, weigh as much intraoperative. And if you can gather the same information preoperative and be confident in it, I think it's going to be a big step forward. So Right well, now and preoperative, I mean, you know, that's the holy grail. If you can get it yeah. all preoperatively, then, you know, it would make the rest of it a lot easier. So Right, right. And so right now we're, we're doing an analysis. We're going to present it at ASCRS, but we're looking at around 50 eyes that are measured with both <clears throat> preoperative and, and uh, um, intraoperative. And I can say anecdotally, I've been impressed of what I've seen so far. And it looks like it's, it's uh, you know, head to head. Or hopefully, I would say that hopefully it'll pull ahead of even aura because there are some variables that are just hard to predict sometimes intraoperatively. The other thing too, I think, is important is that you know, and Cassini is like within three degrees, you know, plus or minus three degrees, whereas other things are like if you're ten plus, <laughs> you know, and it's like yeah. that's a whole, that's a that's a mistake if it's ten plus. Yeah, um, right. You know, and 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 because you don't, you know, again. Bill, you and I are spoiled rotten because we have we have not marked a cornea in, in, you know, since the you know since the the early days of Orange, we have not marked a cornea, or I have not marked a cornea, and I mean, heck, I don't know how long it would take me—five minutes to do it, you know. And I and I I know that uh, Mark Packer presented uh, yep. Doug Koch's study at at a ASCRS in 2023, and I think it was five and a half minutes to mark really? a cornea. Yeah. So oh it's like, you know, that's, that's longer than the cataracts. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and that's and that's really it. When we um, and we actually, um, I, I actually walked around with a clipboard and timed um, one of my surgeons, uh, Greg Hazen, up in Saginaw, Michigan, and he would leave OR one, go out and mark the cornea, and then come back in and go into OR two, and and then 
same thing over and over again. So as soon as he left the operating room, instead of going back into an OR, I started the stopwatch. Five minutes and 39 seconds was the actual count that we <laughs> averaged out to. Because as you know, it's just not possible to walk up to a patient, mark their eye and turn around and walk back in again. You know, the spouse is asking if they can do dishes later that day, you know, how much, um, you know, it's just, it's the whole conversation. How was your weekend? And so there just isn't any way to just keep things moving along. Um, yeah. And I know that you, both of you, since I've been in surgery with you, um, just keep cooking right along because you're not doing that. But for people right. who are trying to get into doing premium, I know that there's a lot of wasted time and that is the most expensive time is is in the operating room. It, it, I, it, go ahead. I was going to say, I never much thought about the, the time expense, but it's interesting you say that. But just the accuracy, I mean, those marks, the big ink mark right. is just so inaccurate. I mean, it, it, that's like- it bleeds five, five degrees. Right, right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that's always worried me. Like, I mean, the digital marking, it's so cool just to see yeah, the, the, the digital. Well, and even, even, you know, scleral vessels. And then you, and then it, it, for instance, you know, you grab it, you grab the eye to rotate it a little bit. You just call it causes subconjunctival hemorrhage and now you can't see the scleral vessels. So, yeah. you know, it's, um, I mean, I, I'm very spoiled. If I had to mark, I'm not sure what I would do. You know, I, I'm I also too, I do surgery at 12 o'clock. So my incision from lens are is always at 90 degrees. So I have a mark, you know, after the lens are, um, but, you know, um, you know, and I always align my aura at 90, but, but, it, you know, it's still, th those are, you know, seconds, not minutes. Yep. Right. right. Yep. Um, we, I know that we've got uh, a, an image injection unit that is coming so that you'll never either have to look away from the, the uh, ingenuity system that you're using, Dr. Wiley, or away from the oculars, Dr. Stevenson. Um, but currently, because it's on the big monitor, um, have you found that to be uh, an interruption to your workflow at all, just in the current setup? Yeah, 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 sort of yes and no. I think um, it's interesting. I, I, it's now becoming a true cockpit that I'm in. I've got the ingenuity screen for 3D. I've got an or screen over here and I've got now this new screens. I've got three televisions that I'm looking at. <coughs> so there's something that's kind of cool about that, but it is a little annoying kind of looking back and forth. You're looking at the TV. I'm looking at the ingenuity and then the uh, uh, Cassini alignment and it's back and forth. Initially, I didn't think much about it because I'm doing heads up anyways. I'm already heads up. I'm just now scanning back and forth, but I can imagine if you're looking through a scope, and looking up and then looking yeah, it, down, that, that could be, yeah. I don't know. Do you, I don't know you know, once I've gotten used to it, cause my, I, 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 even though I have, or in my ocular, I still look at the screen cause it, it tends to tell me a little, I, yeah. I the screen cause it gives me three, three things to look at. And when I'm looking at that, I'm just looking at the, at the graph, if you will, of, of, of the patient looking at the center of that. I rather look at the screen cause I'm looking at three separate entities. And then I can also look at a fourth thing which is across the top, which tells me the refraction. So those are all important things to me. So really hasn't been a problem for me looking at it, but I can't wait till everything's in the oculars and it's all, right. you know, just perfect for me. Right. Yeah. And in, and in the case of our ingenuity users out there and Dr. Wiley, um, the, with that image injection unit, then it's just simply going to be overlaid right onto the, uh, okay. the live eye on the ingenuity. So that'll work cool. out. That'll work out great. But um, right now you're going to stick with that fancy cockpit that you have uh, yeah. for, for a short period of time. Um, let's see. What other ones do we have here? Toric lenses. Um, Dr. Wiley, you're using a number of different toric lenses. Um, how many different lenses types are you using and um, well, what's your experience been? Yeah, I mean, thus far it's been great to help you know, uh, zero in on, on the uh, tricity. It's, it's done a great job of measuring that uh, posterior corneal astigmatism. And so it gives me confidence that we're putting the lens in the right spot. You know, nowadays, you know, I, I tend to, anybody that we can put in a torque, we tend to lean that way. And uh, so now you have presbyopic. I mean, you have a trifocal torque, you have an EDOF torque, you have a 
you know, standard torque, and then and then you can even have other ones, you know, you know, in, you know, uh, one that you do use for hype rope or you know, non non aspheric, and you know, all these different torque lenses, and and uh, you know, it, it's seamless to have that in the planner and have that ability to choose whatever you think is going to be appropriate for this case, and um, it helps make that plan for you. So so it's sort of uh, makes it a non issue. Great, um, Dr. Stevenson, on the planning side. Yes. Um, and going through the data on the planner, what's your experience been? I know that you've used some of the other um, planners that are out there um, as well as ours. What's your experience been? Well, um, I will say this. I'm, the veracity is nice. It, it, I have to reboot and reboot for it to pick up the Iowa Master 700 on, which is their product. So I'm very frustrated frustrated with that. Um, I, You know, this is just pretty much straightforward. I, I've all, I'm also um, early in use for the new BNL one. Um, so I, that I cannot give you a, 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 a comment about because I, I, there's, I don't have enough experience to give you my opinion. Um, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I figured out, you know, it, it, it's got the, it's got my lenses in. I just, it's just a click. It's just a click. It's all packaged in there. So you just click a button. And the nice part is there's two parts to it too, because when you go to the operating room, you've got the patient's name, a picture of the patient, their allergies, their medications, if they've had RK, whatever information you want to put in there is what comes up on the screen before you take the registration. So it's really nice to review because I I used to be able to remember all my patients, their names and and their eyes, you know, the eye we're doing. And, and the older I get, the, it's a little bit harder. So I do, I, I, I do like the fact that it says Joe Smith and there's a picture of Joe Smith and, you know, I can say, Hey, you know, if I want to, if it's taking us a little more time, I can, I know Joe Smith, so I can say, Hey, if I write something about your, how's your new great grandson or something so we can pass the time. So it doesn't seem like it uh, bothers the patient too long to have to have, you know, you know, uh, two or three minutes go by before we can, do a registration if there's something else going on in the room. So I find it really nice. And then of course, when the, um, when the uh, um, screen comes up for me to take a, a, an image, you know, the nice part about that is that follows me, that follows the case throughout the whole, or, or you know, it shows the case throughout the whole time so that you're able to review it if you want, cause you can have a video and look at it or you can take a still shot. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool from that standpoint, um, you know, cause if you find something that's not the correct, not, not similar, that your belt and suspenders is falling apart. You can go back and look at your acquisition and make sure that it's a good acquisition. I mean, it, it won't register if it's not, um, right. it'll register, you know, um, it's, if it's red or it won't function or it's a kind of an orange or a yellow as a warning, or it's a green. So, so you really can tell whether you've got a good acquisition or not. So I, I think those are, are good little um, pearls that are already in the acquisition screen. And then you see the um, steep axis and, you know, it's marked. I mean, it's marked with the, the lines and, and as your eye moves, those move with it. And it's, it's, um it's pretty straightforward. So, and it's nice. It, it, you know, it follows your, your eye throughout the case. So it's, it's a, it's a good, it's a good screen to look at, but it's an, it's nice. And it, it's very click. It's very foolproof. If you yep. got a problem, then you, you ask a question and then it's fixed. Yep. So, um, nice. and that, that was something that I thought that the developers did a great job on. Well, this needed to be, was a lot easier to use than some of the other systems that have been, yes. that I've seen out there in the 30 years that I've been in ophthalmology. And so, but what was a clever idea was being able to send all that timeout information. I mean, we have all the patient data. It's right. all there. It's all, you know, so why not say, you know, this is Mrs. Smith. We're doing her left eye. You know, this is the lens that we've selected for. This is what the residual astigmatism is going to be based on that lens. I mean, everything is right there on the screen. So the staff can verify that, you know, it's essentially the timeout screen that they can, they can see all of that. So I thought that was really, uh, was really very cool. Um, Dr. Wiley, you and I are working on some studies that we're going to do at ASCRS. Um, it's showing uh, residual astigmatism uh, and um, the ability to, to, to um, 
uh, plan for that? I'm, I'm missing a word here. Can you help me out a little bit on on uh, what we've been doing with in the in that study and and how you've been seeing it in the operating room? Yeah. So so yeah. Basically, we're looking to see, you know, out of all our diagnostics, what is the most predictive for that residual astigmatism? So if you have uh, Cassini uh, with its uh, you know total corneal astigmatism, you have uh, Eyewall Master. Um, we also have Pentacam, uh, and then we have intraoperative, um, aphagic refraction with, uh, aura and then, uh, and then pseudophagic refraction. So we have a number of different, you know, you know, points that we're, uh, cre- uh, collecting this information. And, and the question is, uh, what's the most predictive for that one month refraction and, and what are you going to lean on, uh, time in and time again? And so, um, and, and so I'm looking forward to seeing how Cassini, you know, uh, stacks up, uh, you know, thus far, anecdotally, I've been really impressed. And uh, so if we can have this tool that really gives us that uh, that piece of information, I think we'll all, you know, it, it would be a tool that certainly could be repeatable and reproducible uh, aqu- across a wide range of surgeons and patients and you know, situations. So uh, uh, I'm hoping that that's going to be the case and look forward to presenting that. That's great. Look forward to hearing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, our our uh, our plan, and I think I'm fairly confident in this, is that we're going to be able to because we you're, you're very consistent with your incisions, um, and with us being able to show you know in that range where you're comfortable, where you're going to be making your your phaco incision and your paracentesis, um, and then being able to have that be consistent so that with your surgically induced astigmatism we can really plan for what that residual astigmatism is going to be postoperatively. We can start to really rifle this in and make certain that, you know, you, what you are telling the patient you're going to get as an outcome is in fact what you're going to get. It's very simple for the staff to be able to use in the OR. It's not taking any time away from them being able to care for the patients. And the accuracy that we've seen so far has just been terrific. So cool. I'm looking forward to getting that that data presented too. But I'm um, I, I like where where the this has all been going, and both of you have been so great in helping us do the development on this. It's been really wonderful. Cool. D, anything else? Um. Well, uh, the the two things that I think um, that have made it um, really helpful. Uh, for me, um, again, is the fact that I can actually see all of it on that screen, you know, where my incision is, where my paracentesis is. Um, you know, I would love to get the LRI on there as well, but <laughs> like, like Bill, you know, if I can put a torque in a patient, I'd rather put a torque in than cut the cornea. That's just me. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, that that and the fact that it's so easy to get the acquisition i mean literally seconds and you know what the quality of the acquisition is those are two things i think are really beneficial to me as a surgeon and you know again i i'm a creature of habit and um my incision like bills is in the same place I put it in the same place, you know, I don't float my incision anywhere. It's always at my surgical uh, incision is at 90 in my paracentesis, depending on which eye is, you know, 30 or whatever. And, um, you know, so the makes the variables less and it's, and it's just really nice to be able to see it. And I can't, you know, it'll be great when it's in the ocular, when it's overlaid on whatever system somebody might already have, if you have the heads up or whatever. So I think it's a real, I don't think there's a large learning curve and that's the other beauty. So there are three things, the acquisition, the, uh, the, the repeat of, you know, where your incisions are and then, and then um, to be able to, uh, you know, look at it the same way every time. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, so it's easy. There's just no learning curve to this. I, I mean, in the acquisition now to, right perfect it there's a learning curve because you have to be able to decide what you're going to use so that's but to use it itself is there's no learning curve right but to understand it is a little bit more of a learning curve yep yep dr wiley anything else you know i think we've covered so much um 
I, you know, it, it is a great uh, tool and really excited uh, to continue to pioneer uh, and work with you on this uh, great tech. Um, one thing that does come to mind, you know, I was thinking about, it, you know, Cassini has been around for a bit and uh, we had our original unit, gosh, it's been easy, maybe 10 years, but I will say, say that this newest unit is a step forward. I don't know all the ins and outs of how it's different than when we first got in, but I know when we first got in, um, good tool, but it's a little bright, a little hard for the text to work with it, and a little hard to capture. And so I do want to say that if anybody's tried Cassini in the past, this is definitely new and uh, it's an upgraded version of what's out there. And so that's a good news, but it also tells you they've been at this for some time. You know, this is not their first rodeo. They, they, they understand it. They're motivated to figure out. Um, and I look at, you know, this diagnostic, you, you know, with, with all the data points that it's getting is, is way different some, than some of the other diagnostics. You know, if you look at, let's say, you know, IOL master or Argos, I mean, great tools, but if you look at, you know, aligning a torque lens off some of those tools, it's not quite the same as that when you look at the amount of data, both front part of the eye and back part of the eye to gather that information and then analyze it and then project that into the operating room so that we're going to put the lens in the right spot. So there's so many pieces to that puzzle to make sure it all, uh, you know, stacks up right. But number one, you've got to capture. Uh, number two, you've got to then register in the operating room. And number three, you've got to be confident you can place it based on that. And so I think Cassini's checking all those boxes. So great well, work. And, and I'll have to add, uh, you know, Cassini Ambien used in the office as a diagnostic tool. There's so much more to that machine than people realize. I'm a big dry eye person. And all of us, if we're not dry eye people, when we're cataract surgeons, we need to be. And, you know, the nice little grid pattern that the honeycomb pattern that it shows. Yes. I mean, yes, you can look at the the LEDs and see which ones are blurred, you know. But when you're looking at the central part, if you can see the honeycomb is nice and 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 clear and it's perfectly symmetrical, then you know that the cornea is not dry. It also has a uh, a video capability where you can actually see the patient's blink. You can see how the tear film actually flows over the cornea. You can see where they're lacking in a tear film if they're if they have dry spots if they have mat dot dystrophy if they have something that's disrupting their tear film even conjunctival chalasis where they blink and it's all smeared along the in inferior or if they have rk and you can see the the spots on the where the where the uh, rk incision is or previous uh penetrating keratoplasty or even lasik where you can see that they maybe they have some scarring in their flap so all of those things are very visible on Cassini Ambient. It's easy to get a reading on the patient in the office. Literally, my technician, and I have to give both my techs a shout out um, for all the hard work that they do. Um, and my, the one that does most of my surgical um, stuff is Saray. But she, I mean, she, this is, I mean, it's nothing. It used to take, you know, an hour and 15 minutes to get preoperative stuff. Now it's like, 15 minutes to get four or five different machines and Cassini is really the first one that I, I look at and pay attention to um, because of the corneal surface um, indicators on there. I have other machines that do it as well. And, 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 you know, and you can look at the, the Brokinji images on an Iowa master and I'm sure on Lynn star and on the Argos too, to tell you, but not like the profile that the um, Cassini ambient has with the videos and the honeycomb pattern that's just i mean those are just no brainers and you can show them to a patient and you can say look at this honeycomb pattern it's supposed to look like this and yep. look when you blink or if i put an artificial tear in the patient's eye and then do it you can really show them the improvement so telling them to use a drop is one thing but showing them what the drops will do or the lid hygiene or the you know, whatever, using a, a, a cyclosporin for a time being and repeating their preoperative evaluation because repeatable results gives you repeatable outcomes. And if you don't have a good, you know, if your cornea is not good, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You can't get a good ambient reading. You're not going to get a good IOL master or, or a scan reading and you're not going to get a good outcome. And you're going to pick a lens and you're going to pick a, a touristy of a lens and you're going to be way off or you're you're going to miss the axis. So I, I really think that there's a lot more. There's a big, you know, this has got a lot breadth and depth of, 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 of information 
that Cassini has, not just in the operating room, but before you ever get there. So I think those are, if you haven't looked at the uh, Cassini Ambient for your office, before you look at the, um, you know, our uh, surgical uh, package, you need to look at the what the Ambient can do in your office because I think it's invaluable. Awesome. Thank you. That's a wonderful plug. I really appreciate it. Thank you both very much. I'd like to thank everybody who joined us tonight. I'm super grateful and um, hopefully we got a chance to talk to people or, or share how the Cassini uh, Connected OR works. Any microscope, easy to use, super fast and simple and extremely accurate. Um, and I'm grateful to both Dr. Wiley and Dr. Stevenson, uh, again, for all of your time and, and uh, for working so closely with the company. We're, uh, we're grateful to have you. So uh, thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a great Blake. night. Take care.